Are you there? We are still trying to unravel. Now, so this is the first part. When that utterance that sounds like many waters comes into the earth, it comes in form of prophecy. But we need to also unravel why it is called the sound of many waters. So let's go to the book of uh, Revelation chapter 17, verse 14 to 15. Revelation 17, 14 to 15. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For the Lord, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called the chosen and the faithful. Verse 15. And he said unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the horse seated, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Hallelujah. So when we talk about the many waters, the metaphor, many waters, it is referring to turbulent humanity that holds sway under the influence of a seducing spirit that intends to manipulate humanity away from God. And the only thing that can bring humanity into alignment with God, with his purposes in the earth, is the sound of many waters. Prophetic words that capture the purposes of God for individuals, for cities, for tribes, for nations, for continents, for kings. These prophetic words, are you still with me? Okay. Since you didn't understand that, I still need to introduce another scripture. Let's go to the book of uh, Revelation. I didn't intend to read too many scriptures, but when pastor comes up with a team, <laughs> Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 10. We'll do 8 to 11. Then I can, we'll now shift briefly. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. Verse 11, And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples, and nations and tongues and what? King. Thou shalt prophesy. There was, um, it will interest you to know that uh, when the prophetic word is spoken, everybody is excited. It is sweet. But when that word begins to exercise government over you so that the purpose that is carried in that word will come to pass. It can uh, be a, an extremely bitter process. You know, I, I was, we were in a meeting and a senior man of God many years ago prophesied on me. And, I, and he said that, oh, these things that I've spoken to you about, they will begin to, a time will come, you will go to Lagos, and, and then the things will begin to come to pass. So in my office, I was posted to Lagos, which was a posting I didn't like. So I got here. My welcome to Lagos was like my, my Camry, my Toyota Camry. In those days, Camry, you don't, you don't understand what I'm talking about. My Camry was stolen. That was my welcome to, to Lagos. 
Uh, so, I was in the oil industry. Uh, if I get my monthly salary, I can buy a car. So, and I was hoping to get a car at the end of the month, and then the great one now comes and says, um, you will not buy a car now. Use these yellow buses. I, I thought it was for six months for... It became seven years. Now, it, it was in those buses that those encounters, the man spoke about, I got them in the buses. You see, uh, um, the word can be sweet when it is spoken in your mouth. Oh! But the process that it will require to bring it to pass, none of us will opt for such a process. But the fact that you receive the word has implicated you to bring the bitterness. It was after he had experienced the bitterness of the scroll that he now had authority to what? Professor. And if you see the scope of his prophetic ministry, he, can you bring that scripture back again? Bec one encounter, one, one word that he received that God was able to process in his life gave him the authority to be able to speak to peoples. To speak to what? To nations. To speak to what? To tongues. That means, when last did you hear a prophecy about the Yoruba nation? Just the Yoruba nation. Now, does it mean that God doesn't have a counsel for that people group? The reason why such specific people group prophecies are lacking is because of the, our inability to tap into the frequency of the sound of many waters. Are you still with me? Now, 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 only men that have been processed, that have gone through the bitterness of the influence of the government of the word of God as it produces results in the lives of men have the capacity to contain measures of God. You see, this, this is an impartation. Measures of God um, that will give us that latitude to be vessels that can communicate the mind of God for nations. Now listen, I hope you know that on the day of Pentecost something happened. When the Holy Ghost came down, there was no need for an interpreter on the day of Pentecost. Because what was breaking out, every man could hear it in his own language. So the nations heard the counsel of God. The nations heard the voice of God in their own context, in their own language. So every facet of human endeavor, the military, for instance, there is a voice of God for the military, for the members of the armed forces at, at this time. There is a voice of God for people that are in software development. There's an agenda, there's a strategy of God that covers that sphere. And that's why it's called the sound of many waters. Kingdom Voice Network, dispensing the gospel of the kingdom.